This first one asks us to select all true equations. So remember um, <clears throat> that we took a look at that if we're in a right triangle, then the sine of one angle is the same as the cosine of the other one. And remember that these two angles are always equal to 90 degrees. So if we see a sine and a cosine of angles that total 90 degrees, those are going to be equal to each other. Um, so in this case, we've got cosine of 15 and sine of 15. That wouldn't be true. This one has a cosine of 75 and a sine of 15. So these two angles total 90. So then this one is going to be true. Part C has a cosine of 75 and a cosine of 15. So the sine and cosine, it has to be one sine and one cosine. So that one's not going to work. Um, cosine of 15 and sine of 75, that's going to be good because 15 plus 75 equals 90. Um, and then in part E, it's tangent. So that one's not going to work. It has to be a sine and a cosine. Number two, write an expression that can be used to find the value of x, um, or write two expressions, sorry. So any two expressions, now there's going to be a ton of them that will work for this. You've learned a lot of ways to solve for a missing side. Um, so in here, you could do, if you wanted to use the 25 degree angle as your anchor point, then x is going to be the adjacent side. And then you've got the 11, so you'd have adjacent and hypotenuse if we're looking at um, the 25 degree angle. And our cosine function puts together the adjacent and the hypotenuse, so it's going to be cosine of 25 equals the adjacent x divided by the hypotenuse 11. Then if you wanted to use the 65 degree angle, now the side with the x is the opposite side and then the 11 stays the hypotenuse so opposite and hypotenuse is our sine function so we would do sine of 65 equals x over 11 if we wanted to do it that way number three andre and my are discussing how to solve for side a b um, so AB is the one labeled X on here. And Andre thinks that you can use the equation of tangent of 12 equals X over 6 to solve for AB. And my thinks that you can use the equation tangent of 78 equals 6 over X. Do you agree with either of them? Show or explain your reasoning. So if we take a look first at um, Andre's, he's looking at the 12 degree angle. Okay, so here's the 12 degree angle. The X would be opposite of that angle since it's directly across the triangle. And then the six is the adjacent side because BC is the hypotenuse. So opposite and adjacent is a tan function. So we would do tangent of 12 equals the opposite X over the adjacent six. And that is the equation that Andre said. So Andre's is gonna be good. Then we can look at Mize, and she thinks the equation tan 78 equals 6 over x. So this 78 degree angle is coming from angle B, since 90 minus 12 equals 78 for that angle. So in this case, when we're looking at angle B, now directly across from angle B is the 6. So this side is opposite of angle B and the X is adjacent to angle B. So if we do the tangent of 78, the opposite side goes on top, which is the six, and the adjacent side on the bottom, which is the X, and that is the equation that my set up, so that equation is going to be good as well. Number four, Jada is visiting New York to see the Empire State Building. She's 100 feet away from the spot where she sees it. Um, and when she looks to the top of the building, she um, needs to look up at an 86.1 degree angle. So how tall is the Empire State Building? So we know um, this length right here is 100 feet. And we also know this angle here is 86.1 degrees. 
So if we, and then we're looking for this height. So this is the angle that we're given. And um, so let's label the sides. So I'm just gonna change that to orange. So directly across from this angle is the opposite side. So the height is the opposite. And right next to the angle is the adjacent. So the 100 is the adjacent. So the function that puts together the opposite side and the adjacent side is the tangent function. So we'll do tangent of the angle equals the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. And in this case, our angle is 86.1 degrees. That's going to equal the opposite side H over 100. And so then if we type in tangent of 86 into our calculator, um, this is 14.67 feet. And then we can just cross multiply. So multiply this 100 up. So we'll do 100 times 14.67 to get our height. So the height is 1,467 feet. Number five, find the missing measurements in this triangle. So we'll go ahead and look for um, side AB. We'll also look for side AC. And then we will also look for angle B. So I like to use the information that's given to me. So I'm gonna use this 35 degree angle and I'm gonna solve for the orange side first. So directly across from the angle is the opposite side. So this side AB is the opposite side. And then the side that was given to us, this nine is the hypotenuse. So the function that connects the opposite and the hypotenuse is the sine function. So sine of our angle is gonna equal the opposite over the hypotenuse. So sine of 35 is gonna equal our opposite side AB divided by our hypotenuse of nine. And um, the sine of 35 is equal to 0 0.5736. If we type that into our calculator, then we just need to uh, multiply this nine up. So we'll do nine times the five point or the point five seven three six, and that will give us about five point one six for side AB. Then you have a couple of options to find the blue side. You could set up a cosine function since that's the adjacent. Um, or you could do the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm just going to set up the um, cosine function actually. So cosine of 35 is equal to the adjacent side, which is AC, over the hypotenuse, which is 9. And um, so type in the cosine of 35 into your calculator and you'll get 0 0.81. 9, 2 is equal to AC over 9. So then we can cross multiply that 9 up. And we'll do 9 times 0 0.8192. And we get that side AC is equal to about 7.37. Then the last thing we need to solve for is that missing angle. So we know that angle B and C in a right triangle total 90. So angle B is going to equal 90 minus that 35. So angle B is going to be 55 degrees. Number six, write two expressions to find the length of BC. And um, so we've got quite a few things we can do here. Um, but if we use this 55 right away, then I could label the 4.9 um, the opposite and the 6 the hypotenuse. So you could set up with that um, 55 degree angle a, well, we don't want to do a sine function actually because that's the opposite and the hypotenuse. 
um, but we could do a cosine function. So if we do cosine of 55, cosine is the adjacent, which is side BC, um, over the hypotenuse, which was 6. We could also do a tangent function. So tangent of 55 equals the opposite, which is 4.9, over the adjacent, which is BC. Um, so that would be two equations there. So you'd certainly be done with the problem if you wanted to use those. Um, you could also go ahead and look at um, this angle. So we could do 90 minus 55, which would give us 35 degrees here, in which case the 6 would stay the hypotenuse, but now BC would be the opposite and 4.9 would be the adjacent. So we could say um, the sine of 35 is equal to the opposite BC over the hypotenuse of 6. And you could do a tangent function of 35 is equal to the opposite BC over the adjacent 4.9. So then in this one, we also have the two sides given to us. So we could also look into doing a Pythagorean theorem. And so the expression here would be that um, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. But if we solved it for BC, we know we would get the square root of the hypotenuse squared minus the leg squared. So you could do square root of 6 squared minus 4.9 squared for an equation as well. All right, in number 7, we want to verify that a 7, 24, 25 triangle is a Pythagorean triple. So remember, we'll plug this into Pythagorean theorem. So taking a look at 25 squared and then at 7 squared plus 24 squared. So 25 squared is 625. 7 squared is 49. And 24 squared is 576. When we add um, 49 and 576, we get 625. So then that verifies that it's a Pythagorean triple. Then we want to actually approximate the angles in this right triangle. Um, so you can just draw a sketch if you need to. So this would be 7, 24, and then 25. And then I'm just going, going to label an angle just so that I can kind of see what I'm doing. So in this, if I'm looking at finding this angle here and I do 7 divided by 24, so 7 divided by 24 as a decimal gives us um, 0.2917. And the 7 is our opposite side and the 24 is our adjacent side. So we would be looking in the opposite over adjacent column. And then we'd be looking for the decimal of 0.29. So we can see that that's somewhere be between these. So about like 15 or 16 degrees. So if we just said 16 degrees here, then we could subtract that from 90. So 90 minus 16 would give us... Um, 74 degrees for the other angle. So then those would be some approximations there. All right, and then number eight says Priya is playing handball and wants the ball to bounce off wall CB at point E. Um, the court is 20 feet wide and then 34 feet deep. So this is 34 where should she hit the ball? Okay, so where should she hit the ball if she's standing at point A? So first thing we need to do um, is figure out how big this is. So we know this length here is 12. And then we want to compare it to the comparable side or the corresponding side over here. So we know that the whole length is 34. So we're going to do 34 minus 27. And um, we'll get that this length right here is 7. So then we're going to be um, comparing 12 to 7. And then we also want to compare these other lengths over here. 
Um, so this one and this one. And we know the total is 20 for those. So the one that we're um, trying to see, okay, so where should she aim if she's standing at point A? So if we just, we can find either one, I'm gonna find this one. Um, so if we call this one X, then this one would be 20 minus whatever X is. So then that gives us a proportion to set up here. So we did, I did 12 over seven. So I'm gonna do 20 minus X over X. Then we can just cross multiply here. So X times 12 is 12 X. And then seven times this, so seven times 20 is 140. And seven times negative X is negative seven X. So then we'll go ahead and add seven X to both sides. And this would give us um, 19 X equals 140. So then we will divide by 19. And when we divide by 19, we get that x equals 7.37 feet. So this um, says that Priya should hit 7.37 feet um, from E. So this part would be seven, this part right here would be 7.37. If we wanted to figure out this part, um, we could do 20 minus 7.37. And we would get that your 12.63 feet in from B. So. Whichever one you wanted to answer from, that gives you both.